Welcome to the Connect Your Health to Life coaching podcast. I'm your host, Seth Lusk. I'm a master certified life coach and published author with a decade long background working in the health, wellness, and fitness industry as a personal trainer, nutrition specialist, and life coach. If you're anything like me or the clients that I work with, then you might be struggling with some confidence issues or struggling with feeling like you're not living your most fulfilling or authentic life. You may be trying to figure out why you have these amazing desires for what your most fulfilling life would look like, but you can't seem to create consistent action in your life to reflect those desires. So join me as we dive in deep on what it means to truly live a fulfilled and authentic life from the inside out. We're going to look from the perspective of an empowered mindset and uncover some of the reasons why you might be what's holding yourself back from living that most fulfilling life. But don't worry, this isn't about blame, guilt, or shame. This is about empowering you to see. I'm going to break through some of the biggest illusions and myths that we've all been taught to believe along the way, and I'm so excited to have you with me on this journey. So my only question for you is, are you ready to start living your most fulfilling life once and for all? Then let's get started, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. For those of you listening in for the first time, welcome, welcome. You picked an interesting topic to listen in on for your first time this week, but also, if you've been listening since the beginning, for your 73rd time this week. We're on episode number 73, and today we are talking about something that I think is so important for us as a whole in humanity to grasp. Um, Coming on the tail end of the pandemic, uh, I think a lot of us grappled with this over the last couple of years. Due to lockdowns or restrictions of travel, a lot of people faced loneliness over the last couple of years. And I think now as the sort of restrictions are being lifted, um, you know, people are saying the pandemic is over. It's not really over, but we are sort of moving on through it right now and um, seeing what happens. And I think that now... Coming on the tail end of us exiting these restriction, this restrictive period due to the pandemic, it's really important for us to kind of look back at this experience that most of us or so many people had during the pandemic and analyze the things that went on. So many different things came to the surface during this pandemic that our generation and generations after us and even a couple of generations before us that were alive right now and experiencing this time of the pandemic, things came up because this was an experience that none of us had ever lived through before, a pandemic. And while I, I understand that for many people this felt very traumatic, I think it was also very important for us to go through because it brought a lot of things to the surface that we had become too comfortable with burying And they were just kind of sitting there, festering under the surface, and we were all kind of just ignoring it and pretending like it wasn't happening. And the pandemic forced us, a lot of us, to come face to face with the things that we were hiding from ourselves. One of those things being loneliness. And so I wanted to come on here this week on my social media and on the podcast and talk about loneliness this week because I feel like... The social constructs that we have surrounding loneliness and how we are taught to deal with it, how we're taught to look at it, are very disempowering. And they put us in a position where actually we set ourselves up to feel more loneliness. And so I want to talk about this today, starting off with talking about what exactly loneliness is. I hear people saying all of the time, I'm lonely. And this is in and of itself is problematic because this makes lonely feel like it's a circumstance. I am lonely. Like loneliness is something that happens to you and that is you. And the truth is loneliness is a feeling. It's an emotion that we experience. And as I've told you all before, you know, the feelings, emotions come from our believing and our thinking. I know so many people out there that believe that loneliness is circumstantial and they will, you know, hear, oh no, loneliness is a feeling, it's not a circumstance, and they'll kind of nod their head and then turn around and say things as if loneliness in their life is a special circumstance and it's not a feeling, it's a reality and it's a circumstance in their life that they are having to deal with. And 
I want to encourage you today to listen in and pay attention and really lean into your own feeling of loneliness to understand where it's coming from. Because I promise you, my friends, loneliness does not happen because of a circumstance. Now, circumstances in our lives, we can have thoughts about them that will trigger loneliness. But the circumstance itself is not the cause of loneliness. Most people thought the pandemic was causing their loneliness. And sadly, many people committed suicide because they didn't know how to handle the feeling of loneliness. And they didn't understand that it wasn't coming from the pandemic. It was coming from their own thinking and believing. They weren't even taught to look at this. And that, to me, is sad. And that's why I think it's so important for us to open up this conversation and talk about this. Is because so many people out there are so disempowered in the feeling of loneliness. And that is not a pleasant place to be, my friends. I mean, loneliness in and of itself is not a feeling that we love to feel. But it's an important feeling to feel because it's there to guide us to something, to its source, which is our thoughts and beliefs about ourselves that create the feeling of loneliness. And when we resist and when we reject loneliness and when we blame it on circumstances outside of ourselves, we set ourselves up to experience it over and over and over again and feel like we're at the affect of loneliness. Like, we can do nothing about it. We're just going to feel lonely because that's what life does to us. And so I want to talk about this today. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that it comes from thoughts and beliefs, not circumstances. And these thoughts and beliefs that they come from, that the feeling of loneliness comes from, are self-rejecting thoughts. Sometimes they come in the form of questions. Sometimes they come in the form of statements. Things like, I'm not good enough. Or things like, am I good enough? Do I belong? Or I don't belong. I'm not connected. Or am I connected? Wondering whether or not you could be understood or saying, no, I'm not understood. Saying things to yourself about your value in life. I'm not valuable. People don't value, value me. I'm not important to them. I'm not rememberable. People won't remember me. Thoughts like this. Thoughts like, I don't matter to people. These are thoughts that produce the feeling of loneliness. And oftentimes we have them during periods of time when we are physically alone. But here's what's so interesting about it, is that we, we tend to look at loneliness as being a circumstantial thing. But I don't know how many different friends, clients of mine, talk about feeling lonely when they're surrounded by people. How many movie stars, music artists, famous people in this world have committed suicide or ended up um, needing therapy because of their feelings of loneliness when they are surrounded by people that adore them and actually adore them to the point that they are just hounding them for attention. And yet these people feel lonely. So my friends, if loneliness was circumstantial, then that would mean that there would be certain circumstances in life that always created loneliness in people when they happened in their lives. But the truth is there are plenty of people that choose to be physically alone and don't feel lonely. And there are plenty of people that surround themselves with hordes and hordes and hordes of friends and people, just acquaintances are always around people that always feel lonely. And my friends, this is our sign to recognize this isn't about a circumstance. Coming on the tail end of the pandemic, my friends, if you felt lonely during the pandemic, I am here to tell you the pandemic did not make you feel lonely. You've had thoughts and beliefs creating the feeling of loneliness for a long time. They just came to the surface during the pandemic because they became louder, because you had less to distract yourself with from that thinking. So I want to talk about these sort of thoughts and beliefs and some of the social constructs and areas in our life that they come from and why we kind of battle with this and why we, we sort of have a struggle with coming to terms with the fact that loneliness is a thought. It's a belief. It's not a circumstance. So the first social construct we have is this construct of community. 
This idea of people with similar wants and likes and ideas in life, similar ways of wanting and going about doing things in life, it comes from this idea of being similar to other people. Which, when we're not allowing ourselves to have that deep, loving relationship with ourselves, we can often become dependent on other humans and in their experience to provide us with this feeling of community. And what's interesting is that this desire to be similar to other people ends up actually driving us to thoughts and beliefs that will develop loneliness. It's really very interesting, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit, that those, this idea of being similar to other people and how it creates loneliness. So we can often become dependent on other people to experience this feeling of community. The feeling we are looking for here is, is belonging. Do you belong somewhere? And that's where this idea of community comes from. And I'm not trying to say that the idea of community is a bad thing, but the way we go about approaching it as being our source of belonging is the problem. So often we will do whatever it takes to try and fit in with a group to be similar to them in order to achieve this feeling. But then the feeling of loneliness comes back anyways. So why is that? We work so hard to fit into a group. And then, you know, we, we get the external validation, and then the feeling of loneliness comes back. Why is that? My friends, it's because what I just said a minute ago. Trying to be similar to other people. Because the moment that we try to fit in by being similar to other people, we no longer belong. We edit, we filter, we adjust ourselves to accommodate a group to get them to like us or want us so that we can feel like we belong. But what we are doing is internally rejecting ourselves by saying, no, 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 that person that's you right there, no, you can't be that. That's not good enough. You're not good enough as your real self. You need to pretend to be these things to fit in here so that you can feel like you belong. So we take on these roles to be in these groups and they're not genuinely us. And that role belongs in the group, but you, you don't. Belonging is this very interesting thing. It's, it's one of the antidotes to loneliness, along with the concept of connectedness. And I talk about connectedness all the time, but I think I've not yet addressed belonging quite so much. So yeah, we're, we're all in this search for this feeling of belonging somewhere. And this feeling of community, we believe, provides it for us. But in reality, it's our own thinking and believing about ourselves and being willing to show up as our truest selves and affirm for ourselves that we belong as that person. And I have a little bit more to say about that, but before I, before I dive in deeper on that concept... I want to look at another social construct that we can often surround thoughts and beliefs of loneliness around and therefore create the feeling of loneliness for ourselves. And this social construct is relationships. I'm talking individual relationships. Often, even if we do have the sense of community, or if we don't, but say we do, we, we have this feeling of community. Maybe we feel like we belong in a community finally, but we still feel this pull this longing for something deeper, for a deeper belonging, a deeper connectedness. We may notice that in community we can belong there, we can connect, but we may get this feeling of loneliness even when we're surrounded by people where we feel like we belong. We may feel like there's something deeper that we're longing for there, intimacy. And intimacy is very interesting. I'm not just talking about sexual intimacy. I'm talking about the intimacy of a deep friendship, too. Intimacy is this feeling of openness and vulnerability and safety in a relationship that we have. That we can fully express and be ourselves and feel fully seen, fully known, and fully accepted. Sometimes in a group of people, we can feel a bit drowned out as everyone's trying to talk and be seen and be heard. And so sometimes we search for these connections one-on-one -on -one with other people individually at varying levels of intimacy. And we're talking through different relationships like romantic relationships, friendships, family, even work relationships. But I want to say something about this here. We're longing for that deeper intimacy even when we have that sense of community because the source of it is not in another person. And I'm not going to say here that we shouldn't want to have relationships. 
and that wanting them is bad or destructive. That's not what I'm saying at all. But we want to put them into context. We see relationships as being a source of something that we desire. We go after relationships so that we can feel something that we desire. But here's the thing. A relationship with another person is an expression. It's an expression of what we already feel. And what we already feel comes from what we think and believe. So relationships are not a source of something in our life. They are an expression of what we think and we believe about ourselves and life. And that inner desire that we have is actually us desiring to fulfill that for ourselves and then express it through the relationships around us. But we see it the other way around. We see it as, no, I need it to be in this relationship so I can feel those things about myself. But my friends, relationships are an expression. And this is where relationships get tricky. And this ties back to community as well. You see, sometimes we go into relationships without having taken care of that inner desire. That inner desire of true openness and intimacy with ourselves. To be willing to be fully ourselves. Whether another person accepts it or not, we still know that's not about us. We are 100% acceptable. And we're willing to be open and intimate with ourselves and therefore express it in relationships with other people. That inner desire to feel fully seen, fully heard, fully known and accepted. Sometimes we can learn through a relationship. As we learn that that relationship isn't there to provide us for those feelings, we can learn through being in relationship how to create those things for ourselves. So I'm not here to to offer that, you know, same old song and dance that you've heard so many times, you can't be in a relationship until you love yourself. Because while it is, it's true to an extent, you will never be fully open in the relationship. You will never fully express what it is that you want to express in the relationship until you choose to love yourself. I have seen people learn the process of offering this to to themselves by being in a relationship and learning that the relationship will not provide it for them. I did it myself. For many years, I believed my relationship with my husband would be what provided me with that inner longing to love myself and accept myself finally. But it turned out the relationship was never going to provide it. And the longer I leaned on my husband to provide that for me, the more pressure, the more he buckled under the pressure of wanting to meet that need, but couldn't because it's only something I can meet. And we created so much dysfunction and codependency in our marriage in the beginning due to me relying on him for that feeling and him doing the same with me. I mean, we, we did it to each other. But then we woke up to recognize we can't give each other what it is that we're actually looking to feel. We can express it to each other if we allow ourselves to feel it, but we can't give it to each other. And the more we look at each other with these needy, grasping hands of give me, give me, give me the love that I want to feel, the more we feel like I need to get out of this. It's more than I can handle. It's more than I can take. It's more than I can do. And we put so much strain on our marriage in the beginning, depending on each other for those things, until we woke up and recognized we can't give this to each other. We have to give it to ourselves first. And then we can show up in this relationship full of that love and offer that to each other and express it through this relationship. So I'm not here to say that you can't be in a relationship if you don't love yourself. But being in the relationship will not make you feel loved. That's what I'm here to say. It will not make you feel loved. What what will is you learning through the relationship that the relationship isn't going to make you feel love. And then you finally choosing to put in the time to pay attention to yourself because you are the most important thing in your life. And pay attention enough to learn how to accept and love yourself. To learn who you truly are and learn to love and accept that person. And then you can show up in that relationship as that person and express it. And the relationship becomes this massive expression of you knowing that about yourself. You showing up full of love. Not because your partner or your husband or your wife or whoever is is loving you. But because you love yourself and you express it through that relationship.
The relationship doesn't give it to you. We learn this, this to depend on relationships to provide us with these feelings. We become codependent and dependent in these relationships, and the relationships become so dysfunctional as the people in the relationships attempt to meet a need for each other that is designed to be met for ourselves. And this puts pressure in the relationship and on the individuals within the relationship. And it either becomes so dysfunctional that it evolves into this distancing of the relationship, either through a breakup or just becoming so emotionally distant with each other that they stay in the relationship, but internally they've shut each other out. They're wanting out. They're no longer... Have you ever met people in a marriage that years afterwards, they don't feel intimate with each other. They don't, they feel lonely in the relationship. It's not because of the other person in the relationship. It's because they are leaning on the relationship to provide them with the feeling that they want to feel and they're not giving it to themselves. And so they blame the other person, they blame the relationship, and they distance themselves emotionally in the relationship because they won't be intimate with themselves and therefore they can't express it in that relationship. So relationships are a double-edged sword here. They can be an opportunity for us to learn how to truly love ourselves. But when we look at the relationship as being the source of it, which was what we've been taught to do through Disney movies and all the romance movies and romance books and stories out there and fairy tales and falling in love and finally feeling loved. And we get taught this over and over again, but it's not true. And that's why so many people out there are in these relationships with so many people, and even being married, and they still feel lonely. They still feel like they don't belong. They still can't feel that connectedness, that belonging that they want to feel, no matter how many close relationships they have, no matter how many friends, no matter how many times they marry and get divorced and get remarried, because they won't look at the true source of this feeling that they want, which is in themselves. They won't learn through the relationship that the relationship is merely an expression of what they believe about themselves. And right now, what they believe about themselves is not lovable, not acceptable, not belonging, not connected. So that's what the relationship is expressing too. How many of you out there have friendships, are in relationships, and still feel the feeling of lonely? I need us to wake up to the fact that this is because relationship is not the source of what we are looking for here. That source of belonging, that source of connectedness, it comes from ourselves. The relationship is an expression. And if your thoughts and beliefs support feeling lonely, the relationship won't fix that. It will merely express it. This is a choice that you will make to notice and heal that thinking, and those beliefs to be able to heal the loneliness. And like I said, you can sometimes do it through relationship. If you look at the relationship as an opportunity to bring up all of the junk in your in your head, all of the junk thoughts, all of the junk beliefs that you're carrying around with you that are causing the feelings of loneliness and not belonging and not connectedness, If you choose to see your relationship as the opportunity to have those beliefs and those thoughts triggered in you and brought to the surface so that you can look at them and heal them for yourself, not with the relationship, heal them for yourself as the relationship brings them up. See, this is the amazing thing about relationships. They are an expression of what we believe and think. They trigger what we believe and think. They will bring them up in us and they will bring up every thought and belief that you think is so darkly hidden in you that no one will ever find it. Relationships will bring that up and express them out loud and offer you the opportunity to learn and to change those thoughts and beliefs. But the relationship will not give you the feeling that you're looking for. So if you find yourself in this pattern of getting into relationship, codependent or dependent relationship over and over and over again, and you're still struggling with this this feeling of loneliness and not i would i would offer that i would recommend just be with yourself for a little while get to know yourself and make the commitment to yourself that the next time you get into a relationship you're not going to lean on that relationship to give you what it is that you feel that comes from you and that yes you could get into a relationship but that relationship is going to be a learning opportunity for you to dig up and find those thoughts and beliefs inside of you that are hiding that you're hiding from yourself that you're scared to look at 
that are creating these lonely feelings of not belonging, not being good enough, not being connected. If you want to get into a relationship and seek that opportunity to find those thoughts and beliefs, and then you do something about them, my friends, my hat's off to you. Do it. I recommend it, as a matter of fact. I think it's a powerful way to do this. It's also sometimes quite painful, especially when the other person in the relationship doesn't understand what is going on. But as long as you do, and you're open to talk about this, there is a way to do this. And I think it can be very healthy, very therapeutic for both people in the relationship, especially for the other person in the relationship to see you doing this for yourself because maybe they're struggling with the same thing. But the relationship will not give you the feeling that you're looking for. The relationship will not make you not feel lonely. And what's interesting is that the same concept applies when we talk about community. So many people feel like they never belong in a community. The community can open their arms and accept, but the person doesn't feel accepted or welcome or belonging. They keep leaning on the community to make them feel that. All the while, the feeling sorry for themselves because they don't feel like they belong puts so much pressure on the community that they cannot, they can't live up to. And the relationship with the community becomes dependent or codependent. And oftentimes, in a dependent relationship, the party being asked to solve for the individual's loneliness will distance themselves. And I think there are many reasons why this happens on the human experience level. You know, based on how we grew up and our attachment styles, it all has to do with that, I believe, and many other things. When it comes to thoughts and beliefs and lenses that we see life through that would cause people in a community to kind of turn away or back away from a person seeking to feel belonging through the community but they won't choose to give it to themselves. It puts pressure on people. And I think on a subconscious and spiritual level, we recognize that we can't solve for this longing within another person unless they are willing to solve it for themselves. They have to be willing to choose to choose growth and to change their thoughts and beliefs about themselves, and we can't make them do that. And I think we recognize this on a subconscious level. And sometimes... I think on a deeply spiritual level, we feel this barrier that they're putting up to our acceptance and our offer of connection. And we feel repelled by that energy. Maybe it even brings up our own thoughts and feelings of inadequacy and disconnection. And we don't want to face them, so we back away. So my friends, what's, what's crazy is that when we lean on these relationships in community or in individual relationships, we end up repelling each other away because what we're asking the other person to do is impossible. And I think on a very subconscious and deeply spiritual level, we recognize that. And our own trauma and triggering comes up when we have a person leaning on us and begging us to solve for them something that we cannot solve for them. And sometimes we try. We try for many years until we get so exhausted and fed up. And then we blame the other person for it. But here's the thing. <laughs> we tried to solve something that wasn't ours to solve. So it's not the other person's fault. We were, we were active in that codependency as well. And then we walk away from the relationship feeling lonely. Like, we'll never be understood. I don't belong. Look, that relationship didn't work either. We don't even recognize why the relationships aren't working. Why the people are backing away. Why we are backing away from the relationships. It's not because there's something broken about us. It's because we are not looking in the right place. We are being taught to look in the wrong place for the feelings that we are looking for here. And we're being taught that relationship is the source of what we're looking for here when really it's the expression of it. We keep looking for relationships to solve our feeling of loneliness, to solve the feeling of wanting to feel connected and belonging. And when we don't feel those things, we feel lonely. But what we do when we feel lonely makes all of the difference, my friends. Do you look for an external social construct to solve for the feeling of loneliness? Because if you do, what you're actually doing is rejecting yourself again. And you will end up recreating loneliness in your life. Because you are decidedly choosing to keep thoughts and beliefs about yourself to support the feeling of loneliness. Instead of choosing thoughts and feelings or thoughts and beliefs that support the feeling of belonging and connection. There's such a deeply spiritual longing here. That feeling of connection, of belonging. But we are, again, we're so attached to the ego's experience of life that we forget that beyond all of this physical human experience, 
beyond the people looking at you and not understanding you, not understanding the way you behave, not understanding the way you speak, not understanding the way you look, not understanding the way you dress, and you know, distancing themselves from that because of their own inability to accept themselves fully. We get so wrapped up in the ego's experience of life and being attached to all of that, we forget that we are deeply spiritual beings living and expressing through this physical experience. And what these people are expressing when they express rejection is their rejection of themselves. And that that doesn't make us not belong or doesn't make us disconnected from them. We're still connected to them even if they don't recognize it. We are one, and nothing can change that. Whether you believe it or not, we are connected. We are one, and we are one with our higher power. And our relationships in this world are merely an expression of that connectedness and oneness, not the source of the feeling that we long for. But so many of us, when we feel lonely, we seek to avoid the feeling and to run away, and we do so with seeking these social constructs the social constructs that are meant to be just an expression of the feeling that we already have of belonging and connected. But we enter into them feeling lonely and expecting the, the, the connection, the social construct, to give us the feeling of belonging and connectedness. We seek social constructs with scarcity and fear and desperation. And as I said, we can find the feelings of belonging and acceptance and connection while in relationship. If we recognize that the source is not the relationship, it's ourselves. And we stop looking at relationships that don't make us feel connected or belonging as being bad relationships. That's not true either. The relationship was there to show you your thoughts and your feelings about yourself. It wasn't a bad relationship. You just didn't look at it as being the learning opportunity that it actually was. That relationship was an expression of you and what you think and believe. And you instead blame the relationship as being bad, walked away, didn't learn anything, and then you'll just go right back into another relationship looking for that relationship to provide you with the same feeling. And guess what'll happen? Your thoughts and beliefs that you currently have of you not being accepted, you not belonging, you not being connected will be expressed in that relationship. And then you'll blame that relationship for being bad. Or yourself for just being broken. My friends, relationship is not the source. Relationship is an opportunity to express, and we learn through that opportunity to express. When things happen and come up in relationship that feel uncomfortable, and instead of being like, oh, something's wrong in the relationship, we lean in and say, this relationship is trying to teach me something right now about myself and what I think and believe about this world. That's how we grow in relationship. But instead, most of us are just avoiding our loneliness and trying to use relationship as a distraction, as a source of feeling connected. The issue with avoiding loneliness and believing that it's bad is that we negate the purpose of the feeling. And so many of us are doing that. We think loneliness is a bad feeling that we have to get rid of. And I get it. It doesn't feel comfortable. But the reason why it doesn't feel comfortable is because it's trying to point out some really self-hateful thoughts that you are having about yourself. It's very important. It's a very, believe it or not, a very loving emotion. Because loneliness is there to help you recognize something that is so important for you to see. Remember that feelings and emotions are spotlights. They direct our attention to something that is important. In the case of loneliness, it is there to direct your attention to your own thoughts and beliefs about yourself. That put limits on your ability to belong. That put limits on your worth. That put limits on your acceptability. That put limits on your lovability. Loneliness, my friend, is your friend. It is not your enemy. It's not bad. Do we want to act in loneliness all the time? No, absolutely not. We don't want to react to loneliness. But when we recognize that loneliness is coming from our own thoughts and beliefs and that what it wants us to do is to look at those thoughts and beliefs and stop being so destructive and dismissive and rejecting to yourself, when we can recognize that, we can lean into loneliness with love and compassion. Belonging and connectedness are the antidotes to loneliness. But our issue with the current society is that the two antidotes that we have, we keep looking to other people and groups of people outside of us to provide them for us, but the only place that we can provide them is within ourselves. Because remember, feelings come from our own thinking. No one can make you think anything. 
No one can make you think or believe anything about yourself. Even, and I know some people say, what about hypnotism? Even with hypnotism, hypnotism is suggestion. Suggestion. The, The thought construct, the belief already has to be there. So, my friends, no one can make you feel anything that you want to feel. No one can make you feel connected or like you belong, no matter how hard they try, or no matter how much you try and guilt trip them into doing more and more things for you to help you feel those things. Only your thinking about yourself can accomplish either creating either of these antidotes. But as long as loneliness is there, I also need you to stop thinking that loneliness is bad. Because if loneliness is there, it is there, it is there with loving open arms and saying, hey, hey. Listen to what you're saying to yourself here. Listen to how you talk to yourself here. Why are you doing this to you? Why are you believing these rejecting thoughts about yourself? That's what loneliness wants you to do. Belonging is the recognition within our thinking that we are a part of something bigger than ourselves. But at the same time, having the courage to stand alone and knowing that when other people in their human experience can't see it yet, or don't see it, or feel too afraid to see it and stand with you, this is the feeling of belonging, recognition that you are a part of something bigger, no matter what anyone else sees or believes. And no one can take it from you, even if you stand physically alone. Loneliness happens when the ego convinces you that that physical standing alone is you, who you are standing alone and being alone. But who you are cannot and never will be alone. Even if the people around you do not recognize that they are connected to you, that they are one with you, they are. Whether they like it or not, or whether they think they like it or not, or believe they like it or not, they are connected to you. And you believing that, no matter what anyone's behavior says, that's belonging. That's where belonging comes from. Just because other people in their human experience can't recognize the connectedness doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. There are people out there that don't recognize many things that exist. That doesn't mean that they don't exist. Why are we willing to see those things, but we won't see for ourselves what exists and believe that with our whole heart? I know people will say, oh, I don't want to be delusional. You're already delusional. You're making it up anyways. <laughs> people, I don't want to be, I don't want to be crazy and just make this up in my head. My friend, I love you. You already are. We all are. We're all making it up in our heads. So if you're afraid of looking delusional and just making it up in your head, guess what? You're already doing it. So why don't you just do it in a way that empowers you? It, I mean, seriously, think about that. You're already making it up anyways. You're making it up anyways. So why are you making it up in a way that disempowers you and rejects yourself? For fear of doing it the other way because you don't want to be delusional and be making it up. We as humans are all so deeply connected on a level that is beyond this physical life. And the egoic thinking state of this life that we, that we tend to live in will encourage us to not see it. So being willing to courageously see and stand in the truth of the fact that we are connected, this is where our sense of belonging comes from. This is where that sense of connectedness comes from that you seek. And I get it. I get it that some people don't want to just jump right to believing that from where most of us stand in our self-talk. Most of us have such negative, self-rejecting self-talk that jumping straight to, I belong and I'm connected. Maybe you need to take some steps in that direction. If you believe, I don't belong, maybe the next step is, what if I could belong? What if I could Could I find evidence that I belong if I look for it hard enough? Give your mind the task. That's what's so crazy about the mind. We have this reticular activating system, and when we give our mind a command, it can't do anything but obey that command. But many of us don't recognize the commands we're giving our brains. Commands to look for self-rejection. Commands to look for the fact that we're not connected. Commands to look for the fact that we are broken, effed up individuals that no one can love. That our love is conditional. That's what we tell our brains to look for, and that's exactly what it finds. So what is the solution here, my friends? 
I get that there are times in life when we're in the middle of, of a process of accomplishing something and we don't want the energy of loneliness to be the energy that we move and work from. That's okay. But we don't reject loneliness. We don't say loneliness is bad. Sometimes what we can do is we can move the feeling when we are in a time of action. But we don't avoid the feeling. We can honor that feeling of lonely. And we want to do that because it's there to show us something important. So we can do this strategy that I call, I call it bookmarking. I do it for myself. I teach my clients to do it. So if I'm feeling rage or anger in a situation where I want to respond with love, I can bookmark the emotion. I bookmark it. I tell myself, I see you there, rage. I see you there, anger. And I want to honor you. I want to understand what you're here to show me. Right now, we're going to respond with love. And later, we're going to have some time together to sit down and figure out what it is that you're here to show me. And I bookmark it. And when I bookmark it, I will intentionally set aside time later that is to get into that feeling and to understand the thoughts and beliefs that I have that are creating that feeling in me, where it's coming from, what it wants to show me. So when it comes to loneliness and we need to bookmark it, we set aside time to allow for that feeling of loneliness to come back up again. And this time we lean in, we give it our fullest attention. We allow time for it to come up. You can even, you know, set a timer for 10 minutes and allow yourself 10 minutes to just completely indulge and immerse yourself into that feeling of loneliness. But once that timer is up, we stop indulging. We're fully in the feeling. Now let's journal about it. Let's journal what it feels like. What are we thinking about at the time? Write down everything that is going on in your head at the time when you're feeling this, this lonely feeling. Let the feeling completely crest. It cannot hurt you. Ride it like a wave. Imagine, as um, Christine Hassler says, be like the surfer. Ride the emotion like a wave. Let it come up. Write it all out. Let it all out. Let, your, let yourself fully experience the crest of the emotion of loneliness. It cannot hurt you. It is only there to bring up with it. As the emotion rises, it's going to bring up with it all of the hidden thoughts and feelings that support it. And you want those thoughts and feelings to come up. You want them to come up so that you have an opportunity to examine them. We slip into the mode of the investigator, the examiner, the detective, and we look at these thoughts and feelings. We spend time with those thoughts and feelings, and we un try to understand, where did they come from? Why have I been choosing to believe them for so long? How do I feel like maybe they protect me or they accomplish something for me in my life? I don't do things for no reason. I do everything for a good reason. So what is the reason why I've kept these thoughts and feelings around? What do I think I'm protecting myself from? How can I protect myself from these things in a way that is productive instead of feeling lonely and like I'm not good enough and like I'm not connected? We can examine with the lens of curiosity to find a deeper, bigger truth that doesn't involve thoughts of self-rejection, of not being good enough, of not belonging, of not being worthy, of not being important. Make a conscious decision about what we want to believe about ourselves. You can do this, my friends. You can make a conscious decision to do that. It's one of the biggest things that I help my clients with. And then show up as the fullest expression of that true self. Make a conscious decision to see that you are connected and worthy of being known and seen as the true and real you, not some filtered, edited version to try and fit in. The moment that you try to fit in, to belong is the moment that you belong nowhere. Because you have told yourself that you belong nowhere. You have taken yourself, shoved it to the side and said, you don't belong, but this role here that I'm going to pretend to be, it does. And give yourself the middle finger. The moment that you try to fit in, that's when you don't belong anywhere. But the truth is, you do belong. You're just choosing to see that you don't belong. So my friends, what is it that I want you to take from day, from today? There are a few different things. Number one is that loneliness is not a circumstance, and it's not caused by circumstances in your life. Loneliness is about your thinking and your belief about yourself, about your worth, about your acceptability, about your lovability, and about whether or not you choose to see that you belong. No one in this world can make you feel like you belong, 
or cure your loneliness for you. That is the biggest and hardest step to take here is to own your loneliness. Take responsibility for it. Take your power back with it. This isn't about guilt and shame and blame. This is about recognizing this is an emotion I am creating. It is here to show me something that is important for me because I recognize, part of me recognizes this is important for me to look at. Own that feeling. You are creating it for a reason. Lean in and listen. I know we are programmed to believe that social circles will solve loneliness for us and that we can lean on and expect other people to change loneliness for us, but they cannot. Please see that. Only you can do it. Take your power and responsibility back. Our leaning on these other people will only lead to more circumstances in which we feel we will be physically alone. And then we'll still have these this inner dialogue to keep us company, the one of loneliness. When we lean on other people to solve our loneliness, we push them away energetically and we create circumstances where we are actually physically alone and then what we're left with is that inner dialogue of loneliness. But then we reject that inner dialogue. We don't listen to it. We don't listen to what it's there to tell us and show us about our own thinking that's creating the loneliness. And what do we do? We run back out there in the world into the arms of another person, into the arms of another group to try to fit in, to try and solve for the loneliness when the solution is in the words that you're telling yourself, my friends, that is when you feel lonely that you keep running away from. Stop running from loneliness, my friends. It's your friend and it wants to show you something important. And it's only in leaning in and recognizing that your thoughts and beliefs are what's creating it. And only you have the power to change those thoughts and beliefs. You create the belonging that you want to feel. And then you express it with relationships. You don't get it from the relationship. Become deeply aware of this, my friends. This is so important for your spiritual and your mental health but also for the health of all of your relationships. If you don't have a sense of belonging and connectedness, then relationships will be an expression of that lack of, lone, uh, that lack of belonging and connectedness. It will be an expression of the fact that you do not feel like you belong or connected. I see it happen all of the time with my friends and clients. They get into relationships to try and feel like they belong and end up reaffirming what they already believe, that they don't belong. I need you to recognize this. If you take nothing else from this today, take that away. The relationship is not the source. It is an expression of what you believe about yourself. And if you believe you are not lovable, that relationship will express the fact that you are not lovable for you. And if you're not willing to learn from that experience in that relationship, then you will end up either staying in the relationship to try and keep pulling it out of the relationship and it becomes more and more emotionally manipulative and codependent and destructive or you'll leave the relationship and say see told you so you suck you are lonely no one will ever love you my friends relationships are an expression of what we already believe about ourselves they are not a source of what we want to believe about ourselves but as i said if you're willing to get into a relationship and have it trigger all of that crap to come up and you're willing to see that this is not coming from the relationship, it's coming from my thoughts and beliefs, and you're willing to heal that for yourself while in the relationship, then sure, yes, relationships can be an opportunity. But only if you recognize that they are not the source of what you're looking for. And I'm not also saying that relationships are the only way to trigger those thoughts and beliefs in us and have them come up. They're going to come up anyways. But sometimes relationships are a really great way to trigger this. As we try and get intimate with a person, all of our insecurities come out. All of our beliefs and thoughts about ourselves come out. As they try and get closer and closer to us and we try and get closer to them. This is what I want you to take from this today. From this time. Notice and own that you are the source of your loneliness. And that the solution lies there. Not in feeling ashamed or guilt about the fact that you feel lonely. But feeling empowered about the fact that you are creating that feeling. To show yourself something powerful. To show yourself something that you want to learn. You are creating that powerful experience for yourself, my friends, out of love. Recognize that. You are so loved that you are willing to experience loneliness to see what it is that you are telling yourself that says otherwise, that says that you are not loved. That's what the experience of loneliness is there for. Fitting into groups will only reaffirm your feeling of loneliness and not belonging. 
the more you have to change about yourself to fit into a group, the more you reaffirm to yourself that you don't belong and that you're not acceptable, that you're not connected, and that you're truly lonely. I think that is the second most important thing that I want you to take from today, is that editing yourself is self-rejection and is a source of your thinking and beliefs for loneliness. Today is not about blame or shame. This is about empowerment to do and create differently. Do and create differently than what we've been doing up until this time. And awareness is that first step. Awareness that there is an option to do something different is our first step. And I'm hoping that hearing this today will create some more openness, more awareness of this this process, this cycle in people and more of you out there listening so that you can have the opportunity to begin to choose the path of healing those egoic wounds of loneliness and disconnectedness. This is not just about us feeling better, my friends. This is about healing. This is about healing the collective consciousness of humanity and making the journey back to recognizing our oneness, our worthiness, our unconditional worthiness and connectedness. And recognizing that loneliness is yet another illusion of the ego that keeps us tied to and identifying with this physical life. And all of humanity is longing to find their way through to the other side of this, my friends. The question is, are you ready to be a part of the healing of loneliness? By healing it in yourself. And then showing up in the world and expressing that to other people through relationships. Heal yourself and then show up, my friends. Are you ready to be a part of the healing of loneliness? I'm here for you if you are. I'm here to support. I'm here to guide. I'm here to lift up. I'm here to encourage you as a coach. Just reach out. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk, my friends. Let's open this up. You're not alone in struggling with loneliness. Not at all. So let's talk. All right? That's all I have for you all today. I wish you all the most empowered end to your week. And until we meet again here next week, ciao. Hey, thank you for listening in this week. I hope you enjoyed the content of this episode. If you did, please subscribe or follow this podcast to receive the newest episodes every week as I bring them to you here on the Connect Your Health to Life coaching channel. Ratings, reviews, and comments are always appreciated. These allow me to know more of what my listeners would like in the podcast and allow for more people who may be searching for a podcast just like this one to find the Connect Your Health to Life coaching channel. If you would like more information about me and the work that I do with my clients one-on-one, then please visit my website at www.slch.ch. Again, that is www. .slch.ch. You can also find me on social media on Instagram at Seth Lusk underscore coaching. Again, that is Seth Lusk underscore coaching and on Facebook in my free Facebook group community called A Healthy Life Connection. We would love to have you in the group and it's only three membership questions that you have to answer to join. And again, it's entirely free. And if you need any further information or just want to say hello, feel free to send me an email directly at slusk.health at slch.ch. Again, that is slusk.health at slch.ch. Thank you again so much for listening, and I look forward to our next time together. Ciao.